I was born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, my family comes from Central America, from El Salvador. And growing up in Los Angeles, I struggled as a child to uh, identify myself as uh, either a Central American, Latino, Hispanic. I mean, there were so many different names that I couldn't really relate to and I didn't really understand. As I grew older, I realized that uh, our heritage was of Maya and Nahua ancestry. Perhaps through genetic memory, I felt connected to certain things that I saw as a child. For example, my mom took a trip years after being here in the U.S. to Yucatan, and she brought me a red shirt with the, uh, the pyramid of Kukulkan on it, and it, I was immediately drawn to that. So that's kind of where things began, you know, I'd say uh, as a child, probably seven, eight years old, I, I started to feel connected to a lot of these symbols and uh, places that I would wish I could see myself in person. I remember my mom telling me once, you were probably six years old and you took a marker and you went to your grandmother's dresser and you scribbled all over it and your grandmother was really upset. So that was a form of graffiti. Graffiti is also associated with rebelliousness and rebellion and resistance, right? So therefore, those two things were already together in me when I first uh, decided to write on that dresser as a child. I remember growing up listening to different artists and how they sampled music from artists before them from different genres. Same thing with graffiti. When you created graffiti art, um, there was characters that were spray painted like Qbert or, you know, from video games Pac-Man and then you evolve from that and you start to create your, create your own characters, but you also realize that pre-existing characters also um, make a connection between you and another person because they can both relate to that character. Uh, one of the most, I think, uh, intriguing ones was Tiger Lily from uh, Peter Pan. So we took that character in the movie Peter Pan, she gets kidnapped, right? So right away, that connects to the story of missing and murdered indigenous women in Indian country and, and also in you know Juarez and many other parts of the world. So we took that character and she's holding up a picket sign which uh, says land back, right? So one of the things that we also understand as indigenous people is the way we treat the land is also the way we have treated, uh, been treating our women in our communities and, and abroad. So in order for us to be able to heal um, our communities and you know allow for healing to occur within a group you know the, our women we also have to allow for the earth to heal as well and see the connection that the earth has with our women and the way we treat both of them insurgents the term came from the Zapatista movement, which took place in 1994. Uh, that was the first time I had ever heard the term uh, insurgent. You know, they called themselves insurgentes in Spanish, and I was curious to know what that meant. I wanted to create a brand that spoke to indigenous people and indigenous movements. So it went from me being a graffiti artist to becoming somewhat of an activist, I should say, I guess and then mixing both of those together, but also my heritage as well. At first, we wanted it to be uh, exclusively a brand, but uh, fate would not allow it, and I'm happy that it didn't, because so many opportunities came from that. I learned about Chavez Ravine and how the, fa the Mexican families predominantly were evicted so that uh, the Dodger Stadium can be built in that area. So it was kind of like um, recolonizing an area, right? And the first people that were there and are still there, the Tongva people were also displaced. So it made me think about the whole Dodger, you know, support and, and how families, especially brown families, are fans of the Dodger team, but yet know very little of the history. So I felt like I had to say something and that's where the whole term 
you know, you're on Indian land with the LA Dodger logo on it, on top of or superimposed on the plans and map of, you know, what was to become the Dodger Stadium. That's how it all came together. Growing up in a society where you never really see any significant messages on billboards, I felt the urge to want to do something that meant something, that addressed something besides, you know, an ad that was gonna speak to my wallet, you know? And seeing this billboard, we realized like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity to be a contrarian, right? To, to change things around and, and, and tell a different story. One of our members, one of the members of Insurgents has been uh, in Oak Flat and part of the Oak Flat movement for the last perhaps seven years camping and, and you know, supporting. Uh, we were also in Standing Rock and anytime that there's an indigenous movement like we wanna contribute in whichever way possible. And with the Oak Flat movement, we realized that, you know, that we can use our voice, our platform, and our art to try to come up with something which would uh, perhaps lend a voice to that movement.